Is that a Oh, nice. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Got a glass of wine there, Paul. I think it's yeah. Looks <laughs> that way. Is it, it doesn't look quite so red in that. It looks more brown in the, on the video. So, um, good evening. Cheers. Cheers and welcome back, Nigel. Again. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Love to come back. Explain where we are. Where are we? The London bus. We're in Swindon Town. In Swindon, we're at the uh, the Tupney. 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 And Paul told me, what did you see at the bar, Paul, earlier? Well, I was amazed. It's all it's suddenly uh, the penny the penny trot. <laughs> <laughs> That's an outtake for you. Because um, of the bar, it's kind of like, just on, on top of the bar, just hundreds of um, two penny pieces. Mm. Under the glass. And under the glass, yeah. glazed in. And then it kind of dawned on me then, ah. That's the name of the Two pub. Two penny. Yes. yes. The name of the pub. So, yes. so sharp. Razor sharp. What's your What's your red wine? All right. My <laughs> red wine tonight is um. It's called. You shut the um, Sweet cheeks. Which <laughs> is uh, <laughs> real good blush cider. People say I. You know, it's like a rosé cider by the way. It? It's from the Cotswold Cider Company, which is. You've, um, you've been there before. I'm trying to think where it is. Colter. I should know where that is. Um, I've been there before. No, but you've drunk from there before, is what I mean. Have I? You've drunk from that tap before. It's very nice. It's um, it's blackberry and elderberry cider. It's nice. It's only four percent, which is not too strong. Very, very sweet. Oh, very, very sweet. Yeah, but it's it's like so when it's not apples, it's ribena. So yeah. as long as I can drink it when it's right, like ribena, it's really nice. Will ribena translate to our foreign audience? I don't know. Blackcurrant squash, I suppose. Grape juice would that be? Well, it's not grape, is it? It's no, it's blackcurrant. Black blackcurrant. Anyway, imagine a fruit-based drink. Mm. That. <laughs> what have you got, Nigel? I've got Cider Smith, which I believe is the generic on-tap cider here. Yeah. Um, a dry cider, more dry, uh, which I prefer, I think, to a sweet cider. You do, do you? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it now. I'm, I'm developing a sophisticated palate. It's quite bubbly. Uh, uh, well, right yeah. It's, it's not like... Um, the bubbles coming right at the, yeah, from the bottom. It's like a lava lamp. No, that's fine. Um, at least it's not scrumpy, is all I can say. So very appley, a bit dry, lovely. Four and a half percent, I think, from memory. Mm-hmm. I'm drinking toast. Interesting. It looks like toast, a actually. beer made from bread. Is it really made from bread? Yeah. No. Oh. Not completely made from bread. No. Is, it, is it a local cider? Um, it's beer? Um, I don't know if it's local, but the, there's a uh, money of proceeds goes to charity to reduce food waste. Oh. So yeah. it's made from waste food. Cheers. Cheers. Oh yeah, you've got to tell us what you think of it first. Yeah, yeah. Go on then, give us your taste. You're very analytical. Palette. A bit tangy. It's a mixture of tangy and smooth actually. My first thought was smooth and then it, and then the tang hit me. A little bit fizzy. Sharp. Nice. Yeah, good. A drinkable pint would you say? Definitely. Yeah. Oh, excellent. I'm sure it'll be gone by the end of <coughs> this episode. <coughs> so, we've got a bit, bit of a... You should probably do a warning. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh hang on, yeah. <coughs> Warn them now, quick. Warning. <laughs> yeah, danger, danger. May contain spoilers. What was it um, that Simon Bates used to do? Yeah, because may contain sexual swear words and other bad sim- whatever he used to do in front of the videos. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to sit there, yeah. But no. this, obviously... This won't contain that, but it will contain spoilers. So, and obviously not everyone's going to be able to see this. So. This is a film-based episode. Yeah, so we, we've just we've just come out of the, the cinema, the three of us, because Jeff up until this point had not seen anything Avengers, <laughs> Avengers Endgame, and it had later transpired that Jeff didn't recognise many of the characters in Avengers Endgame during the performance. They, um, a lot of them look similar. You had to act quite as a scrum master and facilitate him through the process. Yes, didn't you? yes, whilst trying to whisper, I didn't whisper very quietly either. That's Captain Marvel. So um, I heard that. Thing. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we've just been to see Avengers. So it brought Jeff up to speed with mm-hmm. the, the latest in the Marvel universe. So if you haven't seen it and plan to see it, don't just listen. yeah skip. Come back once you've seen to it. the end of the podcast. <clears throat> is there also another thing we're going to talk about in this podcast, yes. which is the other thing that I don't know anything about? Oh, Game of Thrones. Yes. So again, if you haven't seen any of Game of Thrones. Don't listen to this podcast. Look away now. Look away now. Skip away. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about spoilers, etc. 
Yeah, so hopefully, but if you've carried on listening at this point, you're happy for us to uh, to share some of those. Should we give them like a three second chance to turn off the radio in the car? They've done it. They've done it already. They've done it. So, um, but we wanted to tie into some of the purpose of this was to tie in the, the subject of storytelling. So this is something that Jeff and I hint, we, we talked about this um, offline, off, off, um, off tape at, at various points, but we thought it'd be an interesting subject for a podcast itself, how storytelling has been done within those two mm-hmm. features. Yeah. Those two, if, if you like, those two products. Yeah. They are products. Yeah, they are products, yeah. Okay. Discuss. <laughs> well, which one do you want to start with first, Avengers or Game of Thrones? Well, I'm, I, I have to be honest, I'm one of those people that hasn't seen any, a single episode why of not? Game of Thrones. That would be interesting to start with, so why not? What was the difficulty for you? To, well, I think it was timing. So in terms of, I think I was told to watch it by about the fact it was season three or four or whatever. It was a long way in. Mm. And I, I felt under pressure to watch a lot in a short space of time so I never had yeah. that time so I didn't invest in it so there's a too much upfront investment too, for you too much, too much to catch up on yeah. too much gone on in advance that would be my kind of mm. well, let's start with the one thing that we have all seen ok then there's ND so why did you want to is it a product in itself well I think it's an there interesting was, to me yeah. there was so much so many things going on so it raises an interesting point to me about stories and the when does a story become something bigger than a story so this the Marvel Universe the, the Avengers the Infinity Saga as it's yeah. known as within Marvel mm. has been has been started as you know Jeff in Iron Man um, back in t- t- 2008 the original Iron Man yes Iron Man 1 where in the end credit sequence... It's never called Iron Man 1, is it? No, it's just Iron Man. Man. So, um, but Nick Fury appears at the end of the, at the end of credits and, com- and appears in Tony Stark's house mm-hmm. and first shares the idea of the Avengers with him. Yeah. You with me? Right. Right. Yeah. So that was something, obviously that's something, that's, that's something that started, yeah. that idea started 10 years ago, yeah. 11 years ago. And it's only really come to kind of an end now. Yeah. Um, that saga has mm-hmm. kind of reached a, a, a conclusion. Yeah. So my question was, and my process behind it was, well, that's that. Did they have all those? Probably didn't have no. all those ideas, no. those details up front. No. But they started this idea ten yeah. years ago, and they've managed to keep people, keep their audience invested in that product. The Infinity product, or the Avengers product. Let's say yeah, it's the yeah, Avengers, Avengers yeah. as a team. Because you, you almost make it two. It's almost two episodes. The Avengers and then uh, the Infinity War, yeah. isn't it really? So, but the uh, the Infinity Stones. It, this has been running through the, yeah. the whole lot. That probably came in a bit later. But the idea of this Avengers yeah. team yeah. Has, has started yeah. ten years ago. Yeah. It's just, just yeah. really yeah. come to, and that's kind of what's kept each film. Twenty-two films has kept drip feeding you these elements of stories but while we are films within themselves yeah. that keep you yeah. that, that deliver they're, they're the, the stalt aren't they slices of value that combine together give a bit of those of value you know there's a whole it's a, this whole of idea about around there was always it always left you wanting a bit more or left yeah. you wanting to know what happens yeah. next yeah. And it's kind of come to that point now yeah. with Endgame that a firm line has kind of been drawn yeah. under that and yeah. but now for me certainly just talking from my own perspective it's left me wanting to know yeah. what's next not from that yeah. that story because yeah. I kind of yeah. appreciate that that's yeah. kind of yeah. a lot of contracts have come to an end yeah. but what's the next yeah. saga going to be and that's going to be two interesting things because there's two things they've drawn from from the comic book world I don't mean plots or storylines but I mean sort of like storytelling yeah. concepts yeah. Um, one they've contradicted and one they've obeyed quite a lot so one is the retcon or retroactive continuity. So for instance, the cosmic cube was never going to be a stone at the start. You know, that was that's something very different. So you act. don't think that they No, were... that's not I mean, the cosmic cube's not even a stone in the comics. So right. it wasn't when I was reading them back okay. in the nineties. Um, so that's retroactive continuity. Okay. They by by using previous storylines and being clever, they can so make the storylines mean a bit more. Yeah. So they've done some good retcon tricks there, which comic books are notorious for. Yeah. Um 
but what they what, what they haven't done is the thing about comic books always used to be. So bear in mind, I stopped reading comic books in the early nineties. Um, I did. I think I did. Um, no, don't. 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 Um, stop in the early 90s and that the comics did change then to become more narrative driven. It used to be very much uh, um, uh, the appearance of change, not change. So comic books would be very serial, the same sort of thing every week. It would look like things are changing and developing, but they would try to keep the change quite limited. Mm-hmm. You know, so characters would die, but they would come back. You know, um, plots would move the story on, but wouldn't really move the story on. Mm-hmm. The idea is you can be publishing this comic for 60 years, yeah, 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 yeah. gotta keep going. And that's, the and, and that's yeah. what they haven't done with Endgame, because Endgame is very much a sudden stop. Now you've got to do it with actors, haven't you? Because actors age, but comic books don't. So like Robert Downey Jr. is getting older. There's no getting around that fact. Yeah. Even if you wanted to play Iron Man forever, He's going to be too old at some point. But, the, but, the but they've very deliberately not been able no, to cut off. What's that? What I say? saw, but we all see things through our own lens. Mm-hmm. I saw it as a metaphor for leadership not being the person because they handed off Captain America's shield to the next yeah. Captain America, the next the, the throne of yeah. Wakanda to the next. All these different things. So that. that yeah. Who's going to be the new Iron Man? Who's... Iron Man will carry yeah. on. Yeah, uh, but that's something that historically, comic book wise, you didn't have to worry so much about. Yeah. You know, in the back. <clears throat> you know, so Tony Stark stopped being Iron Man in the 80s and then came back to be Iron Man. Stopped being Iron Man in the 90s, well, he came didn't, back to be Iron he Man. He didn't age in the comics then. Well, he did age. He died a couple of times, if I remember correctly, in the 90s, but he came back to life because it's comic books. Yeah. But in films, you can't do that. You know, what we're going to do is getting older, his contract only runs a certain length of time. So they came up with some good plot lines to cover that, which mm. is good. And I don't want to get into much in the specifics, but what interests me is just the fact is, because it's films are made by humans, there is a timeline on it. You know, all things come to an end. And so they've chosen to do that with Endgame, which is very fascinating. Because I don't know where they're going to go next with it. No. But no, does, it, does it leave you like me? Maybe it's just because I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. heavily invested, but it's left you wanting to know, well, what what is the next thing? What is what is the next well, story? Well, I think most good news, most good stories, whether in our world or in the now that world, is there's no real happy ever after, is there? There's always there's always something that could be what happens next. You know, I remember as a young. But I didn't see any of that in Endgame. What what's going to come what next? next? Well, Falcon is the is Captain America. Mm. You know, um, yeah. Uh, okay. uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is probably Iron Man. You know, so I heard some of the internet story rumor that so why don't you know at the end the the, the funeral sequence at yeah, the end yeah. where Jeff didn't know any of the people on screen. Um, there's the there's a young lad. Mm. He's from Iron Man too. Isn't yeah, he? so he's the kid in the garage. Yeah, which they're now yeah. saying he's going to be the next. Time. No, it won't be. Won't be. Why, why not? Why not? Well, you tell me why not. He's, he's, <laughs> an, he's, an, he's an only actor. Yeah, yeah, I think practicalities as well. So the, the fact that they wouldn't just bring some Tom Holland. Unknown. You could say Tom Holland was a relatively unknown actor. Spider Man. True, but I, I don't think they'll go that way at all. They'll, they'll they'll do something differently. They won't go that. So way. You, do you think Iron Man will, will be back in some way, shape, or form? They'll look, all franchises come back. Now the question is whether they're going to reboot it or they're going to use succession planning with someone like Gwyneth Paltrow or something like that, which would be interesting as well. Um, but they've got to make some choices on that. Now they've got to, what I think they may do in terms of storytelling is let some of those characters they fallow for a while and then reboot them in the future. Same actors or different actors? Different actors, definitely. But look, look they did with Batman. Yeah. So Batman's been rebooted multiple times, you know. Badly. <laughs> yes. Other than the Chris Nolan films. Mm. So I think they'll do something like that. But the, what I liked about what I liked about the Marvel films was you said about storytelling in that the incremental iterative nature of it in that each story on its own is valuable. It still delivers. But it also builds and creates a larger narrative. Yes. And I think there's something to be said for that. They're not too bitty. No. There's actually an overall story. Um, though having said that, I would, Infinity War did finish on a cliffhanger, didn't it? You know? Because oh, I left the cinema in Infinity War a little bit disappointed yeah. in terms yeah. of, yeah. That's not, that's, I've got no closure. Which yeah. was, that's not the end. Yeah. But do you because it was originally supposed to be one one film, wasn't it? Yeah, it could have like, been. Could, what, seven it, hours. It could have been the, no, that could have been an ending. That could have been the finish. It, but it's so the interesting thing as well. Back to the story idea is the protagonist in the story. So yeah. a lot of you could say in Infinity War, yeah. War, everyone thought it was about the Avengers, but in fact it wasn't. The main protagonist was Thanos. And yeah. It was about his story arc. Yeah. He went through yeah. what, his beginning. Yeah. And then his nat- yeah. that in terms of an antihero. Yeah. He got what he wanted yeah. at the end of it, so that, as that was a that was closure yeah. for that character. Mm. 
So, so do you remember the last time we got together for the last podcast? We spoke about two interesting things. One was like abuser stories, yeah. i.e. looking at stories from an antagonist point of view rather than the protagonist point of view. And the other one was endings that uplift. So you know most people's favourite Star Wars film is regarded as Empire Strikes Back. Is it? But it finishes on the side, no. But actually, it's lowest at the box office. Was it? I think all the Star Wars films are going to be Really? Yeah. Because it finishes on... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Darth Vader's his dad. Um, it's a sledge. <laughs> another, 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 He's a ghost. Should we have another spoiler alert for that? Just yeah. In case. yeah, just in case. Anyone who's been alive in the last uh, uh, 20 years hasn't yeah. seen it. So, um, but the idea is that people prefer endings that uplift, you know. Yeah. And so, um, so I remember that's, saying when I was single figures of age, I, I want stories. Down, yeah. I, to them, I want stories where the good guys don't win. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. Edge Lord. Because in life, good guys yeah. don't always win. Yeah. No. I think it's interesting. So, it's, got to, it's got to be a cathartic. Um, but that's the loss. So it can't just be rubbish. It's got to be bad guys can win as long as there is a sense of. The journey you've been on, you know. Like, was it, um, spoiler alert, uh, No Country of Old Men, where the guy who plays Thanos, Josh Brolin, isn't it? Mm. And dies <laughs> near the end. I've you seen that. You see that? But there's still like a narrative journey yeah. to it, you know. It's not pain, it's not. You sense the story's going in that direction. Hmm. Game of Thrones, different in terms of was each episode its own well, thing? Game of Thrones is a fascinating product management conversation but I think Paul wants to do a bit on Marvel. No, I was just going to say something which is kind of related to both of you but um, when you said you wanted some kind of um, sad ending or that kind of thing so you want the bad guys to win. So I, I mentioned this to you the other week but improv actors are told this thing in terms of when you're on stage you've got nothing, you've got nothing to go on you've got yeah. no, um, no script, no storyline yeah. you've got just yeah. nowhere to go next. The thing that they always tend to head for is either yeah. death. Yeah. So death gives a natural end to the mm, story, yeah. or the only thing that actually surpasses death in terms of in yeah. audience enjoyment is love. Some yeah. kind of matrimony, marriage, yeah. where love con- conquers death. Mm. So they anyway, want that was all. Yeah. And so, but to like Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones is fascinating from a product management point of view because okay, there's a huge, large story arc that is left unfinished by the original architect. Mm-hmm. So the product managers have to make up the later feature sets to a greater or lesser extent. Uh, timelines get compressed because the product managers want to move on to Same Lucasfilm. Yeah. And so all of a sudden the later series, even though I think the arcs are quite clever, the implementation of them in the last few series has been poor to very poor. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's interesting. So, but some people confuse the, the implementation with the message. So they're disliking the overall idea because the implementation was done poorly. And so when you say implementation, what do you mean by that? So, so for me, that has so, so okay, massive spoiler with that. So I did a by blow my own trumpet. Um, I did a Game of Thrones open space at one of the Las Vegas, I think it was back in like 2012 or 2013. Yes, you did, yeah, I remember that. Um, basically, um, I said my big theory at the time was Danny, who's the chief one, of the chief protagonist, is one of the villains. Right. And then I literally got booed out the room. I was, did you? Yeah, lots of woo. It turns out that is true. Right. She is the main villain, basically. Okay. However, that only came out in the last two episodes really okay. they kind of rushed her turn to the dark side so if you read the novels they've only done the, they've only done the first half basically yeah. but basically Danny is Anakin from Star Wars you know on a, on a, a turn to the dark side on a mission basically um, but like in Star Wars when Anakin's rush was rushed yeah. to change um, so Danny's was to a certain okay. extent in the TV show they had less shows this season than all the others okay. that was a choice by the product owners by the executive producers the story is they're trying to get off it quick to get onto Lucasfilm okay. so they're going to go off the Lucasfilm on the okay. next Star Wars trilogy uh, yeah. okay. that's, that's the alleged, allegedly allegedly the story I don't know if that's true or not but it does feel rushed the last couple of seasons okay. yeah, they've taken something's too slow and something's too quick mm. and they need to work some of that back a little bit and actually be a bit smoother with that introduction of her villainy mm. or the introduction of the other stuff. Whereas that film, uh, over three hours, yeah, wasn't yeah. really rushed. No, it wasn't, no. No, it was a bit long I think me. it could have been shorter. Yeah, I think it would be better shorter. Mm. There was a lot of arcs, you talk about story arcs, yeah. there was a lot of character arcs that kind of had to complete. complete. So you know, was, yeah. I was wondering whether they were actually going to so you, you well, change the subject slightly, but if you've got an author who has a series, like a detective series or mm-hmm. something, yeah. and you pick up the third book, in that, you yeah. can pick that up and read it without having read the other two, yeah. because the author will go out of their way to explain the backstory, yeah. Yeah. the necessary bits yeah. of the backstory. 
I was wondering whether that would happen in this one, and it didn't. No, this one dropped you in cold. And it was all, or did it? Yeah. Or did it? Yeah, so okay. I was trying yeah. to think of that from from you, from you having you sit next to me. There was wasn't familiar with all the characters and the backstory. You didn't. Did you need to know who Cam, Captain Marvel was? Probably if you don't, not. she's a it was a juices machine, and she's like come out literally got out of the sky. Yeah. You know. But did you need to know that? Well, it would have been not. It would have helped a little, little bit. It would have explained. Yeah. But equally, Ant Man um, tried to explain even when he got to the Avengers. Yeah. facility yeah. he tried to explain what yeah. had happened but could that be more fundamental you don't explain who Iron Man is who Captain America no, is, who no, Black true. Widow is or no. the Hulk is so you've got to have that knowledge yeah. if you don't know any of that you've got none of these characters yeah, true. You know, so, but it's not supposed to be at this point literally as part two of a film Yes, it's part two um, but story wise that means they can get into the story quicker. Yeah. So in terms of storytelling, you've got the mythos, the back written, yeah. which is good, but it can make that story very difficult. You could take that back to um, user stories and stuff like that. And teams have got a lot of background in domain knowledge and mythos. You can start them right in the middle of the story. You know, yeah. they always say it's, as a writer, should start their story as late as possible. People don't want to see lots of backstory on screen. Yeah. You know, they want to get into the story as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. So writers spend a lot of time world building sometimes, and they should just get into the story first yeah. and let the world evolve naturally. Yeah. Same thing with what we talk about in work. You know, if teams got those domain rules. They understand the mythos. You can start deep in the story. But if they don't understand the mythos, you'll do a bit of world building, and that can be a bit. Oh, I'm I'm Vlog, son of Urg. Yeah. You know, barbarian from the Minos destiny, yeah. whoever. And it's like I don't know what you're talking about, mate. It's just dialogue. You know, they didn't do that in Endgame. There's a couple of good quotes in there. You, you, look, you looked over yeah, at me once. Yeah, I liked what was everyone it? fails at being who they're supposed to be, so you might as well get on with being who you are. Yeah. Um, part of the journey is the end. Yeah. Well, so start yeah, over. yeah. Though it is an interesting point for you, just again, a drifting off agile slightly. I felt Captain America and Tony Stark to a certain extent were very unauthentic to their characters at the end. Would Captain America, who's the ultimate good guy, stand up for good, really just abandon everyone and go off and have a life? But he didn't abandon anyone. He did, because he could have been... That he's only big. gone for five minutes. Yeah, but he's now 75, he's always incapable of carrying it yeah. forward. He could have used all that 30, 40 years so of capability. He does it, he's aged horribly, didn't he? If you saw. But he would have been like, he's 30 know. now. But if he's 30 now, so imagine like he's 30 now, he's got 40, 50, up to 60 probably, still being Captain America, he could be working on the Earth. But, he he, but that's what we don't own, know, is we don't know. that for his own we, um, but we don't, needs. We don't, but we don't know what happened in that timeline. I think you do. Yeah, but, that, yeah, yeah. but that's one thing. He could have done all that at the end of... That could be a whole... The whole... The whole what is it done very well yeah. in games is it's opened up multiple well, timelines. Well, like Captain America in the 50s yeah. things secretly behind the scenes. Yeah. But it just seemed to be quite inauthentic to the character of Captain America who was about sacrifice. Like, if you think about it, just overthinking about it, really, if there was one character who would sacrifice themselves, Captain it would America. be Captain America, mm -hmm. not, not Iron Man, right? Who's always, Iron Man's always the guy who gets out of trouble, basically. But isn't this about closure, though? Isn't that about their redemption? That's their but what redemption does Iron Man need? So he's got he a needs child. To move on. He's got Iron Man's got a child. But he now. saw his dad, didn't he? His dad yeah. said, uh, "The greater good never won out against my selfish needs." Yeah. And that was his sort of parting words. So you feel he said, "I'll save the world. I'll save the world rather than yeah. be with my daughters." Or yeah. Thing. That was his redemption. The, and saving his dad. And Captain America never put himself first. And that was his. Yeah, I'm going to move on. That, that therapy session. He said everybody needs to move on from someone. He needs to move on from being Captain America. Yeah, it just strikes me as one's about being selfish and one's about being unselfish. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would have suggested there would normally be the other way around. I, think I just felt, I just felt, ah, it's a bit. I don't agree. I think I, I'm not. In terms of how the arc of Iron Man's been up to this point, I, I, I just, yeah, and also he didn't need to do it. If you just think about it, practically, he didn't need to do it. He didn't need to use the claw at that point. You know, he could just shot a laser beam, one of the stones that Thanos and killed him. He doesn't need all the, doesn't need to worry about the entire force, give the cut to the America. What? No, the, no, the snap was fine. That's The Hulk did that earlier. Remember when, when Iron Man snapped, that was just to kill the bad guys. Mm -hmm. So he could have just shot Thanos with his finger and not done any damage to himself at all. 
and then given the girl to uh, um, uh, Marvel, Captain Marvel, who could have snapped her fingers and destroyed them all. There was no need for him to. If he was bringing them back, I understand, but they would have been brought back. It was literally an act of um, so they could, ego. They could have ridden him off into the virtual sunset. Yeah. Like, like I, they did I, with I, would th- I would have thought they would have retired yeah. Iron Man, killed Captain America, not, it's killed, like, ca- not killed Iron Man, retired Captain America. But there's various points, they're very clever about how they did it. They almost set up various points that you thought, oh, this is it, he's going to die now. Yeah. Or this is it, this is, he's going to die now. You never yeah. really knew who the character was. We all kind of yeah. knew that someone was going to die. Yeah. But we never really knew yeah. who or yeah. when. Because mm. he but teased Iron Man at the beginning, and what if we thought that maybe this is it, but you yeah. obviously knew it wasn't it. Yeah. That's something I've always had a problem with, and I don't think anyone can fix. Generally in films, you know he's not going to die at the start. Yeah, false. But even, well, yeah, it's just plot he's, armor, they call it plot armor. But even worse than plot armor is when the characters seem to have read the script ahead of time. So characters do stuff that would, no one would do because it's deadly, and they survive because they're heroes, but it's because they've read the script and they're not going to die at the end of the sequence. Yeah. And Iron Man's been notorious for that through all the Marvel films, right? Do I, I know I'm not going to die. Mm. They kill him off at the end that way. It's like, eh. well, I, I, would have, I would have reversed the death. I would have had Iron Man Didn't have a Wasn't that what? Oh, yeah, yeah. But again, but again that, that's working yeah. backwards. They wanted to kill Iron Man off, so they worked the plot backwards to make it happen. Yeah. So, like, that's when you give the finger one and the thing, you would have killed yourself to do it. But if I, if I told you, yeah. it wouldn't happen. So if you yeah. knew that, that you had to. But that could, you could easily have swap that to Captain America easily. You know, it would have been. It just seemed to me more the Captain America thing to do, you know, than the uh, Iron Man thing. The Iron Man thing would be like a man but in the shadows, you know, like, uh, what was his name? Uh, Von Pym, like him. Yeah. Hank Pym. Hank Pym, like him. Like a man behind the scenes type character, I would have thought. Oh. Any other um, but Game, could... Game of Thrones kind of interesting, agile comparisons? There's a nice quote at the end of Game of Thrones you, you told, you read it out to me. The other day. Um, story can't be beaten. Mm. It's to do with no enemy can defeat it. Mm. Stories win. Yeah. So I think what was interesting with Game of Thrones was it seems very open for a sequel. <laughs> Even though oh, really? it's over. Yeah, it does. So they've sent Jon Snow up to the north. To probably the king of the north or something like that. So did anyone die at the end of the game? Yeah, everyone dies. But um, uh, but the, the point was, it didn't. I guess the point... G, uh, GRM is making with his books is that uh, in events, you know, right. no happy ever after. Things keep rolling, rolling, rolling. So even though the books have ended, you can see yeah. that world is carrying on. You know, there's no happily ever after, basically. Yeah. But again, people prefer endings that elevate. So he always said that the end of Game of Thrones was supposed to be bittersweet, mm. and it was just bitter. For most people was it? Yeah, because there was so, a mixed was response, wasn't there? It's a hugely uh, anti-response. Was it? the so, favorite, the, the the favorite house won. Yeah. Didn't but they won in a way they didn't want. They didn't want Bran on the throne. They didn't want Arya sailing off. They didn't want John being exiled to the north. They probably wanted Sansa to be queen of the north. That's about it, really. And so that that's a little bit of sweet and a lot of bitter. I didn't mind it. I was fine with it. But a lot of people really vicious, vis- viciously didn't like it. Um, but what I was saying in terms of what we do in terms of storytelling is having an idea where you're going with your story. Uh, you can be episodic, but you need to be iterative as well as incremental. You need to learn and build on each other. And you need to have some overall arc. So I think um, like with the Star Wars films, I- I'm worried, the way I think the new ones are terrible. Um, they seem to be going really, really wobbly wood with no there, overall arc. There's a new trilogy coming as well, isn't there? Yeah, which is the Game of Thrones place. We're going to do a new trilogy. So where, where will that arc start? That's finish? probably going to be the past, they're saying. Is it? Most of the old Republic. Okay. It's the rumour. Okay. Rumour. Tens of thousands of years ago. But. For me, with the new ones, they seem to be very, they haven't got an arc on yeah. them. So my big concern with stories is when um, characters act inauthentically yeah. to carry the plot along. Yeah. So the plot has got to go in a certain direction, so we get characters to say and do certain things to make the plot move. Classically in like a soap opera. Really but someone, someone will, yeah, but, but like it's the classic uh, half overhearing something and getting the wrong end of the stick. When in real life you say, oh, what did you say? You wouldn't say, oh, I've heard you having an affair with uh, um, that's one thing I dislike. Taking it back to what we do with user stories, I always get annoyed when you have like an actor on a story, and then someone says, "Oh, the actor wants to do this, 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 and this." And the acceptance criteria. No, they don't. They don't want to do that at all. No. You want them to do that. <laughs> they do not want to do that. That actor does not want to perform those behaviours. Yeah. That's not who they are. You're acting authentically. It's like user centered design or whatever. What do these people actually want to do? So, I think plot should come from characters, not yeah, so characters come from plot. I remember Keith Johnson said to me from an improv side of things he said do what the audience expects and they'll be delighted 
So if if, yeah. you, if they expect yeah. that, that character to do something, just follow it, even if it seems obvious. If it doesn't seem original, yeah. just do the obvious stuff. Yeah. I think when people try and get clever, it's the new line on, on the internet kids say it's subverting expectations. Yeah. Which is a little bit annoying. Yeah. You, know, you don't want people don't want that they want to be surprised but they don't want to be subverted. Mm. Like they want to be able to say they go, Oh and then oh that's of course that was gonna happen. That moment of I never expected oh now I get it. Yeah, of course that character would do yeah. that. Yeah. You know. That's what you're trying to do with stories really. You want you don't want to just um, shock the audience for shocking sake. Which I think Game of Thrones has been accused of occasionally. But the books I don't feel like. I feel the books cover that quite nicely. So yeah, so for me, I felt there's some pros and cons in there in terms of I like the end game. I, I like Game of Thrones. I think uh, Game of Thrones ended in a not you, so great way. And even so, will you carry on watching Game of Thrones? Just over now. You Finish. said that the the oh they'll the sequels, probably do they got some first, yeah right? they're gonna have some prequel episodes. I'll watch them, but with no great. Oh, it'll be fine. You yeah, know, as as a, as a casual viewer, it'll be fine. Mm. I don't think I'll be very heavily invested in it. You know, mm. I think same thing with Marvel. I'm interested in where Marvel's going. Interested, but I don't. I'm not 100% invested in the future direction. You know, mm. I want to see what they're going with it first. Mm. New Star Wars films, terrible. I'm uninvested in that. They <laughs> ruined them. So I would watch them. They made the latest one. You did say. I remember you saying you wouldn't weren't going to go and watch. I think it was The Force Awakens. Yeah, I did. Say, I saw them film. I saw them playing. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So last Jedi on a plane had the fast forward bits that were so bad. Um, <laughs> generally terrible. But that's they they've broken the not just the characters but the mythos. Mm. So if you build a world, you've got to be true to that world, mm. you know, as a writer. So it's like for me, again, back to quality ownership, if you're gonna write stories and tell stories and work, you've got to make sure they align with the right values and principles. Mm. You know, they break the values and principles and how authentic your individual story is. Mm maybe rejected by the audience, I would suggest. So I don't understand enough about it, but what, what mythos did they break? In terms of Star Wars? Oh my god, how long you got? So basically, um, the force in Star Wars is effectively Buddhism or Zen. Um, uh, the later Star Wars films seem to have brought a very uh, Abrahamistic uh, 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 sort of good-evil uh, aspect to it that didn't necessarily have before, and even worse than that, a moral relativity to the Force that they never had. Hey, aren't we all just grey? There's no way, you know, and the idea of the Force wasn't good evil, it was um, balance and imbalance, mm. still, and chaos, you know, it was about being emotionally centred or being very uh, aggressive. It wasn't about good and bad, it was about that, you know, stillness, towns, then, or disruption, chaos, disorder not good bad so when they say an aspect of grey no because grey is like the good and bad thing which of course we all are but you can still be still you know and I think they've lost that a little bit and so they've, they've, um, they've lost track of what they're doing and betrayed their characters that's my lack of knowledge because I always imagined it was good and bad yeah, I mean, a lot, yeah a lot of people do but it is and strictly speaking if you watch it as well uh, anger, hate, fear which is uh, just uh, negative emotions not necessarily uh, evil emotions you know, anger is not evil mm. just okay. negative yeah. And so it's that sort of stuff, eh? but that's breaking the mythos behind it. And going back to what we do in our work, there's a certain mythos in our environment as a storyteller. You've got to work with that mythos and work with that environment. If you start breaking it, you'll be rejected quite quick. Looking back to the Scrum Alliance, when it had its old MD or CEO, whoever it was, someone who was quite capable, but had a different mythos behind them, a different background, a different culture, and tried to storytell new ideas into the organisation. And initially was successful because their storytelling was compelling, but actually it broke the core mythos of the organisation, that's why they were rejected in the media to long term. So, to bring this back to um, my initial, how I like, what, what it made me think about this whole Marvel Universe idea. Is how this the kind of planning levels work, or the kind of the features grow. So if you've got a low level task stroke story, that's almost like a film or kind of an ep- like you said, yeah, like yeah, an episode yeah, in itself. Yeah. It's got it's got a start, it's yeah, got a beginning, yeah, middle, and yeah. end, and we get some sense of yeah. exposure, some sense of um, value from that having that mm-hmm. done. But beyond that, so it's, it's stories. I don't like the word, but the idea of epics so some kind of layer above yeah. where there's a group of stories that, see if you look at Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, possibly the Infinity War, the, the uh, Avengers as well, is there's a theme of those yeah. st- episodes that fit together for that particular character. Yeah. 
But above that, I'm, I, I like this idea of the word, it's not necessarily straight to vision for me beyond that. There's, there's this idea of strategy or saga. Yeah. So beyond epic, there's yeah. a saga, which is a number of epics, a number of characters that are going through this, this journey yeah. together. Yeah. So that's again a, a way of, mm. it's, it's something for me underneath yeah. the overall yeah. product vision. But there's a, an extra layer here about strategic yeah. direction, which might last in this case 10 years. Yeah. Um, but the product itself is yeah. probably going to last not, well, hopefully, for Marvel. The Marvel yeah. Universe, yeah. which is probably the vision, is, I imagine, yeah. going to last a lot yeah. longer than that. Well, you can say the Marvel Universe is, Game of Thrones is episodic. The Marvel Universe is episodes. In the Game of Thrones, not every character has end or closure on their arc in an episode. No. Those arcs go across the series. Yeah. When in fact, in the Marvel Universe, characters have closure at the end of every film, basically. How long is a, how long is a Game of Thrones episode? 60 minutes. 55, 55. And how many in a season usually? Uh, 10, I think it was 10 or something. But last season was six. But the point I'm making is that, so you look at each episode of each Iron Man film, Iron Man goes on an arc, a journey with yes. three acts. Yes. And yet that's all, whilst it's being a closed a experience, it's also part of a bigger picture. It's both incremental That's very and clever. Iterative. And the interesting thing, yeah. again, is even when they started that, they didn't know the end of that arc. Yeah. I don't think they did. No. No. So they didn't know what was going to happen to Iron Man no, at no, the end. No, so each arc, they've tried each to arc, build, yeah, build arcs within the arc. Yeah. Interesting. And that could be something, I think, in terms of what we do, in terms of how we do stories in our classic work at the moment, it's all very primitive still. Story, yes. story, 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 whatever. I think some of that layered aspect, not going back to big vision up front or big planning up front, mm -hmm. but that way of using small slices of journey to tell a bigger story, yeah. I think is quite compelling. And there'll be something interesting in there if we could work out what it was. <laughs> I remember Terry Pratchett, who I've read a few of his books, not all of them, talking about the idea of emergent storytelling mm. <clears throat> and how when he writes a book he doesn't know where it's going to end up and he doesn't know where that book's going to fit into the series mm. and he'll regularly come back to something and include it and then mm. sort of tie in. But that's a, yeah. He doesn't refactor the, doesn't change anything that he's already written, but he leaves as many doors open as mm. possible mm. so that he can. Yeah. Well, that's what they call plotters and planters, isn't it? Planters is that. Plant a few ideas, see where they go, gardener. And plotter is, I've got this overall arc, I'm going to ram the stories through this arc. Game of Thrones is written by, notoriously, a planter. Someone who's wandering off, and the trouble he's got is, he's now stuck in the middle. He's got two more books to do, and he's 70. And those books are slow, because okay. he's stuck a bit, you know, and how does he get the plot forward? He's got himself some really interesting plants grown, but they've all entangled in each other, and now he's got to somehow get to the end. He's also tainted because he's got the anchoring that's happened in the show yeah right? well that's his ideas but his high level ideas they've implemented in the show they've not made that up he's given them where it's going to go but yeah you're right that's going to maybe anchor him if he's not careful or if he goes in a different direction may upset people but it's either way it's still yeah, well, delightful, but it's still difficult for him he's, they called it um, in one of his last books it was called the Meronese Knot where he literally got himself in the tears where he couldn't physically work out how to get certain characters to certain points to do certain things mm -hmm. Which is difficult when you're not a plotter. But my issue, I said, along with plotting, is characters do inauthentic things to move the plot along. Yeah. I don't like that either. Actors do inauthentic user stories. <clears throat> okay. You're a bit behind today, mate. Did that go where you expected it to go? No. But that's part of the part, whole part of the is there closure? subtext. Planter, not plotter. Yeah. But where's what's closure for you here? Um. Just that for me, closure is that there's a beauty and kind of a, uh, a connection that we make through that, that I made personally, through that whole saga, that whole journey. Mm. In terms of relating it to Agile, where's your closure there? Well, closure? in terms of, the, they do relate to the, the small, even the small low level day-to-day -day stuff that you do, that you complete, where you, it's important that you can see that part of that overall journey. Okay. See where you're going arc wise. Mm. You may not know the adventures, those characters, and that's the But I think you on. need to know your customer's arc. Yeah. Okay. Beginning, middle, end. Problem. Yeah. Kind of, you know, tipping point, whatever you call it, solution, resolution. Understand the resolution would be the start of a new problem. Mm. Things are stories, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Happy ever after for one person is a start. Of the tail for another. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely think there's something in what we've been discussing here that sort of nuanced arcs and how we work and how we build sophisticated modern products. I just don't know what the answer is today. So is, is slicing the story halfway through? So halfway through, well, what was it? What was the first? So Infinity Wars was the first part, and Endgame was the second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So was was Infinity Wars having that arc at the what do you call it? The um, midpoint cliffhanger. Yeah. Was that a complete story? Well, think of product management. So they've done that deliberately to get you back. So as a product manager, I'm selling individual. It's a subscription model. I've got to sell each slice. I need to get them back for the next slice. If I give them perfect closure, they can walk away. Mm-hmm. I need to keep them interested for the next slice. You, you always talk about in comics, you don't want jumping on off points. People where they can go, oh, brilliant, I close the comic and I'm done with that mm-hmm. one. Because they want to sell it every month for 50 years. They want jumping on points, they don't want jumping off points. Mm-hmm. And so the argument to be made, having a cliffhanger, like that's brilliant for an episodic delivery of value to get more sales. Um, if you do it too much, then you could annoy your customers. You've got to give them a closure in the end, the good guy's got to win at some point, the heel's got to be defeated at some point. But for them, that's a reasonable slicing model. But it's done deliberately, it's done to attract more customers and attract you back. Mm. Different to what we would do, you want someone halfway through a registration process say, oh, come back next month, <laughs> will you finish registration? I'm not <laughs> totally sure that would excite people. So even though you were disappointed, it didn't stop you coming back? No, and even though, just to, even though Endgame reached a, a closure point, I'm that, I'm invested now as a customer, I'll be back to Spider-Man for the next film to see what happens next. Very clever with the Spider-Man though, right? No, I don't think that was very clever. I I (laughs) wanted to say I was silly, because just by him being there and saying there was a trailer... But you heard what's been happening, they've been showing the Spider-Man trailer trailer in front of the films. And it does spoil the whole thing. That's what they did that to us, didn't they? Yeah, but at least they gave him saying, watch it at the end. Do you know another Spider-Man film? Okay. Spider-Man's not dead. But they've been showing the actual but people didn't know films. that Iron Man died. And then yeah. in the trailer, it's clear, quite clear that he does die. Oh. Yeah. And so it's like, whoops, that's why they did that. It's a clever way of... They've got to try and advertise new films and stuff. We all knew Spider-Man's coming back. Somehow. Yeah. Well, you kind of knew, just from the amount of people that died, there with some, of, some yeah. of them are coming back. Also, just spoiler alert, I think Scarlett Johansson is alive. Well, she's she's my, of... Clip my fingers, but she didn't appear. It doesn't mean she's not alive, it just means she hasn't turned up. What are you talking about now? In, you remember you said, I like, clip my fingers. The whole thing, I clip my fingers, wishing yeah. her back, Black Widow back, but she didn't come back. Uh, no, they don't, she hasn't turned up. It doesn't mean she isn't alive with the click of the fingers. Okay. So I'm um, sure spoil got a film coming, haven't she? But they're saying there might be a prequel, might they? Yeah, they're but saying no one ever hates prequels. Could look at Solo, kill off Han Solo, launch Solo, so he died at the box office. Why do I want to see yeah, him maybe. doing Avengers when he got murdered by his son? You know, it's interesting. So I think that'd be interesting. And plus, in comic books, no one's ever dead. <laughs> ever. They used to say no one ever stays dead in comic books apart from Bucky and um, Uncle Ben. And even <laughs> Bucky's come back, you know, because one of those you didn't know who it was. <laughs> so, well, I, I don't read comics anymore, but I bet Uncle Ben's come back as well. With great power comes great responsibility. Anyway, we're done. Well, you're not done, but I'm done. Finish it up. So, um, we'll say cheers. Nice to see you again, Nigel. Good to see you. See you again soon. Let's try not leave it so long next time. No. See you soon. Next Marvel film. (laughs) Bye. 43 minutes.